There are few golfers in the world as decorated as Bernhard Langer. The Bavarian has amassed 84 professional wins, two European Order of Merit titles, two green jackets, an induction into the World Golf Hall of Fame, and he even received an OBE from the Queen of England. But despite his stellar career, Langer found a new lease of life as he joined the Champions Tour. And he heads to this weekend's Senior Open as defending champion, as he'll do next week at the US Senior Open. Well, I've had a better career than I could have dreamed of, that's for sure. I've been very blessed and won many uh, tournaments around the, the whole world. But uh, there's always things you still want to accomplish, and uh, especially the way I played the last three or four years, uh, I've had a lot of fun, won a lot of tournaments. Uh, so there's still a few things I'd like to do. I could have continued to play on tour. I was exempt and I, I could have done that, but it gets a little bit harder with every year. You know, you get a little shorter, the young youngsters hit it a ton, but the Champions Tour is a wonderful thing and it's a lot of fun. Many of the legends of the game and, uh, you know, I, I don't miss the regular tour. I enjoy the Champions Tour a lot. One oft-forgotten achievement of Bernhard Langer's is that he became the first official number one player in the world when the rankings were introduced in 1984. So it was a great sense of pride when compatriot Martin Keimer topped the rankings earlier this year. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, for so many years I was the only German uh, even with any kind of success. And then for Martin to come along and uh, not just have success, but to win the race to Dubai, win the money list in Europe and then become number one in the world. That's very well done. And Langer believes that Keimer can inspire a new generation of German golfers as he did in the 80s and 90s. I think every time you have a, a great role model and somebody who's in the limelight and, and in the media uh, that does well and performs well and, and wins majors and plays in the Ryder Cup and stuff like that, it will bring the sport into the media and, and make uh, young people aware of it and they might pick up the game and, and then we have more good players in the future. The trickle-down effect can be seen in action with a generation of young Europeans inspired by Langer now lighting up world golf. It's especially exciting for European golf because we have, uh, you know, about a half a dozen to ten very good young players on, on top of some of the established ones, and it's an exciting time for Europe. And the rest of the world really has their hands full to keep up with, with them. Uh, you know, we had a stretch there for about ten years where there was no European major winners, and now we've had a, a ton of them the last few years, you know, starting with Padraig Harrington winning three of them. And, and now we got a bunch more, so that's very good and it should be a wonderful time to watch golf. Any chance of coming to New Zealand? I'm not saying I will never be back, but I hope I will, but right now I'm just focusing on playing golf in America. I know it's a wonderful country and I've enjoyed my visits there. I've cut down the, the long trips, uh, that was my first thing I scratched off my schedule about 10-15 years ago, because I've done that long enough. and. And it's hard on the body, so I focus on America and a little bit in Europe.